Good morning. Grace to you and peace from the God who creates and redeems and sustains us. Welcome to the First Presbyterian Church of Lansdowne. It's good to see everybody this morning. Uh, if you've looked around this morning, you've probably figured out that things are going to be a little bit different today. Uh, we've got several things going on. We've got the uh, play that the Presby players are going to present. Um, lots of stuff going on. It's, I'll, I'll explain everything as we sort of go through. Um, if you are joining us on Zoom this morning, we want to say welcome. We are glad that you are here. Um, if you have prayer requests, please put those into the Zoom chat so that we can recognize those when we uh, come to a, the time of prayers for the people later this morning. Uh, our liturgist today is Walter Williams III. Uh, Colin uh, Burke and Chris Bellis are running the AV desk, and our counters today are Bill Kosnett and Ryda Awana. So thank you, everybody, for making sure that worship runs as smoothly as it does every week. Um, you may have noticed that the communion table is set in the middle of the sanctuary this morning. Uh, it's back in front uh, or at the, the cross section. So because we have the play this morning, um, we decided that we would not try to also have communion up here. So what we're going to do is we are going to pretend uh, that from the narthex area here, to the table. We're going to swing the table out so that it sits almost flush with the pews there. We're going to pretend that that short aisle is our normal center aisle. Um, so everybody will come either through the narthex or down the side here and then come up the center. We'll have two servers. We're not going to be doing intinction today. It, everything is just going to be um, the pre-filled cups or uh, the bread and the, cup, uh, the cups in the, in the silver trays. Um, so you'll come in, take communion just like you normally would, and then head back to your seat after that. I'll try to remind everybody once everything's formally set up before we get uh, to that part of the service. But just the easiest way to think about it, I think, is to just pretend that the aisle from the narthex to the table is our normal center aisle, and then just adjust accordingly to that. Um, so, so we'll get there, yeah. Um, our chancel flowers today are given in memory of Don Lewis by Kate and her family. Um, so we've got those up here this morning looking beautiful. The food cupboard request for October is soup. Uh, as a reminder, the donation bin is in the vestibule to Westminster Hall. So we um, appreciate everybody continuing to support that ministry of the community and the congregation. I want to say thanks to everybody. So several months ago, um, uh, we made a petition up here to uh, give money to support uh, what we're calling a coordinated youth ministry with several other Presbyterian churches in uh, the sort of area of the town around us. Um, we had our first event last Sunday evening um, at Sprawl Lanes. Um, there were five churches there. We had 25 youth. Um, there should be the picture. Yeah, pictures up on the screen there. Uh, we had a great time. Um, and so thank you all for supporting that ministry because of the donations of the church and other churches. None of the kids actually had to pay for any of the food or the bowling or anything. They could just come and enjoy, and it was a great time. Um, the next event we're actually going to do at uh, Bonnie Stritzinger and Jen Brittis's, uh splatter paint uh, business up in uh, Broomall. So we're going to do that again at the end of October, the last Sunday in October. Um, so thank you for continuing to support that ministry of the congregation as we get that started. Um, if you would like to uh, have one of the uh, coupons or the shopping passes, excuse me, for the Boscov's Day on October 22nd, John Manchur is here. He's got those with him. Uh, you can talk to him after worship um, to, to get one of those. And a reminder, all of those donations uh, will go to the church as well. Um, a couple of things before we get to the visitor welcome. If you will notice in the bulletin that there are instructions for how we're going to do the last hymn. Um, it's a new hymn for the congregation, so the choir is actually going to stay up front and sort of help us learn that hymn. And there's different pieces that different part that different people are going to do at different times for the the various verses. So just pay attention to that as we get to that point in the worship service. Um, if you are worshiping with us for the first time today, we want to say welcome. We're glad that you're here. Um, as I mentioned, the service is going to look a little different this morning than it would on any other Sunday morning. 
Um, so buckle up, it's gonna be fun. Um, coffee hour is gonna be after worship in Westminster Hall. Um, that's gonna be in the building behind us in the sanctuary here. Everybody is invited to come to that. And there are blue um, visitor trifolds in the back of the pews if you would like to fill out your contact information, put that into the offering plate as we get to that point in the worship service. All right, two more things before we get started. I'll keep these brief. Um, so Carmela was supposed to be here this morning. Uh, she had something come up. Um, so I'm gonna give the minute for mission this morning. So by now, hopefully everyone has seen the devastation that has taken place after Hurricane Helene from uh, Florida all the way through Georgia and the Carolinas uh, and Eastern Tennessee. Um, it's you know, wreaked havoc on these communities um, and uh, there's, uh, there's lots of work obviously being done. Um, and so there's one particular church that we know that's doing a lot of ministry in Black Mountain, North Carolina, um, which is right outside the gates to Montree Conference Center. If anybody here has been to that Presbyterian retreat center before, um, they're one of the few places in Black Mountain that has power at this point. They're serving as a uh, supply distribution center. They are feeding people meals um, on a daily basis. They are sort of serving as a hub for that community, sending folks out still to um, search and make contacts with folks. Um, and so if you would like to, they have set up a relief fund um, at the church to go, the, everything goes straight to the relief efforts. Uh, and then if they have any extra money left over from that, it will go to other local relief organizations um, in, the, in the area. Um, there's a QR code on the screen that takes you straight to their donation page. Um, it's up now, and it'll also be up. We've got a slide for it at the end of worship as well for folks who want to, um, to, to donate to that. If you don't do QR codes, if that's not your thing, um, if you write a check or put it in an envelope and just write either uh, Hurricane Relief or Black Mountain Presbyterian Church, we will also make sure that it gets to them and gets to the right place. Um, so thanks for uh, continuing to um, do what we can do to help folks uh, in that part of the country right now. All right, I'm gonna hand it over now to Walter Williams Jr. for our stewardship minute for the day. Good morning, everyone. Um, when Roger asked me to write a letter, an article, and present it to the congregation, I tried to figure out what could I talk about that hasn't already been said. The only thing I can talk about that hasn't already been said is to tell you about me and how I came to be here. As a child, I was raised in church. We were in church every Sunday. It was a Baptist church. And one of my earliest memories was sitting in a hot pew and my mother telling me, Walter, stop squirming around. Listen to what the minister's saying. And that was hard, because he was yelling and running around up front, and it didn't make a whole lot of sense to me at the time. Now, both of my parents worked full time. My dad usually worked six days a week. He would work the five full days and usually half a day on Saturday. My mom worked five days a week. We were in church almost every Sunday. And both of them spent a lot of time and devoted a lot of their energy to the church. My dad was a deacon. He sang on the senior choir. He helped with things like cutting the grass, painting, fixing things around the church, him and my uncle. My mom was an, an usher. She was a deaconess, because they couldn't have female deacons in a Baptist church, so you had to be a deaconess. And she sang on the woman's chorus, and she was always cooking something for church supper. There was a young man. I joined the youth choir. I went to Sunday school. And at one point, I was a youth usher until I realized that standing up for the entire service was really, really hard. So I gave that up. <laughs> anyway, the point of all of this 
is to tell you that your children are influenced by what you do even when you don't think they're paying attention. They will want to do the things that you do and the things that are important to you will be important to them too. When I joined the church, I joined the stewardship committee to try to help the church stay on a firm footing, both financially and in terms of participation. I wanted to work on the pledge campaign and to try to get more people involved. In our church, we have lots of different committees that are responsible for maintaining the church. Now, I realize that not everybody here is an official member of the church, but you can still help out. You can help cut the grass, you can sing on the choir, you can contribute to the stewardship meetings or help with worship by volunteering to usher. Maybe if you join a committee or sit in on a committee meeting or participate in a work day, you'll find that it's fun and you'll get to know your fellow church members on a deeper level and maybe you'll decide to join and maybe you'll decide to become more active. Working together to move the church forward is good for you and good for the church. Now, before I leave, everybody know what this is? Everybody should have gotten an envelope with a pledge card. If you have not already done so, please, please, please fill out your card and send it in. I can tell you from experience, you can't really plan what we're going to do in the coming year if we don't have an idea what our finances are going to look like. Even if you're not sure how much you can donate. Put something down, send the card in, and do your best to fulfill that pledge. I know times are hard. I know things are expensive. But please, 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 fill out your pledge forms and send them in as soon as you can. Thank you very much. Thank you, Walter. One more quick announcement I just got from uh, Margaret. That, uh, Margaret will be here uh, this morning after worship as well with signups for Community Day, which is going to be on October 20th. So folks who can help with that, uh, it would be good for her to know um, now so we can plan accordingly for that. All right, those are the announcements. Let us begin with worship. Good morning, everyone. All right, let's start today with our responsive call to worship. We gather from the west to the east, from the south to the north. This God of peace accompanies us in each and every circumstance around us. We praise God's name. Amen. Now let us sing together hymn number 386, O for a World. Thank you.
Friends, faced with God's goodness, we recognize our failings. In the knowledge of God's mercy, we dare to tell the truth about ourselves and our world. In the confidence of God's children, let us confess our sins using our corporate prayer of confession. Let us pray together. Gracious Lord, creator of this universe, in your generosity, you have given us a world of abundance and diversity. Yet we live guided by greed and selfishness. We confess that we have defaced your creation and poisoned our environment through our consumerist behavior and for personal gain. In Christ, you made us brothers and sisters and intended for us to be united. And yet we have built walls to separate us from those who are different from us. You gave us wisdom and creativity, and we have used those to trick each other and to develop weapons of destruction and death. You gave us laws to order our lives, and we have abused them to take revenge and punish our enemies. We love war rather than strive for peace. We ignore the poor and the weak and honor the rich and the powerful. In all this, we have not lived according to your will. Forgive us, Lord, for daring to boast in our human achievements and for failing to recognize that you alone are worthy of praise. In your mercy, forgive us our sins. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God accepted us simply because of our faith in Christ, through whom our sins were forgiven. May he help us to continue to sow seeds of peace to those who are near and far. Amen. Holy Spirit, grant us openness and give us understanding of what each one of us needs to receive through Holy Scripture. When we are facing a difficult choice between the easy and the right decision, help us to choose the narrow path. We also pray for all who are about to sit on an adventurous journey of faith anywhere in the world. Amen. Good morning. Um, before we get started, is there anyone who needs the, um, a copy of the insert, which has a description of the El Camino de Santiago and also a list of the cast? Everybody got one in there? Okay. A few months ago, 
our session made the decision to register the First Presbyterian Church of Lansdowne as a Matthew 25 church, an initiative of the PCUSA in which more than 1,236 congregations have enrolled. This was certainly a leap of faith, as we were not completely sure what it would mean for all of us. We realized we would need an education program for all of us, and I was asked if the Presby players could present a skit about Matthew 25. I could not find one. So I was told, well, just write one. Holy cow! I have found, adapted, and directed plays for the last 66 years. Yeah, I started when I was 11. But I am not a writer. After searching and searching with no luck, I thought, well, I'll give it a try. With such a clear message in Matthew 25 and taking inspiration from the other wise man and with lots of prayer, I decided I too would take a leap of faith. Once I got started, my way was clear, and the result is this morning's presentation of the pilgrimage, which I hope will mean as much to you to hear it as it meant to me to write it. Just as I could not see my path to writing this play, we may not see our path to Matthew 25. We need to all take that leap of faith. Our scriptures today are included in the play. Listen for the word of God. You know the story of Artaban, the other wise man, who also saw the star and set out to follow it, yet did not arrive with his brethren to see the child Jesus. Today we will hear the story of a descendant of Artaban hundreds of years later, as he travels on his own pilgrimage. We find Artie Bannon in a beautiful garden getting advice from his pastor as he is about to set off on a personal journey of faith on the Camino de Santiago, in English, the way of St. James, a distance of 790 kilometers. Many follow its roots as a form of spiritual path or retreat for their spiritual growth, which is why Artie is undertaking this route. He will be meeting up with three friends from his church who will be traveling with him. Pastor, you have always taught us that what's most important is what Jesus taught us. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Yes. And faith without action is like a body without breath, dead. That's right. In James, second chapter, verses 14 through 17, it says, What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes, and daily food, if anyone says to him, go, I wish you well, keep warm and be well fed, but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But all I know is that I feel compelled called even to make this pilgrimage. I only hope that by the time I finish, I will understand why. I know God has a special mission for my life, and it is that which I am seeking. And you sold everything you own to fund this trip? Yes, I, I have purchased everything I will need. A plane ticket to France, money for food and lodging on my journey, a bicycle which I have shipped ahead, a backpack and hiking boots. I have even bought special clothing that blocks the sun and washes and dries in a very short time. 
Oh, and, and of course, my hat. But I must hurry now. My flight leaves in two hours. Good, goodbye, Artie. May the Lord bless and keep you on your journey. Artie arrives at the airport with no time to spare. He pays his Uber drivers and turns to enter the terminal. He has just enough time to meet his traveling companions at the gate. He suddenly notices the person collapsed on the curb, clearly unconscious. Oh my, what has happened here? No fever, but his pulse is very weak. If I stop to help, I will miss my flight. But what else can I do? Nine one one. Hello? Yes, I'm at the Philadelphia airport in front of Terminal A, Section 3. There is a person unconscious on the curb. Yes, I understand. I will stay on the line and wait here until help arrives. Well, I've missed the plane, but I have to do what I can. Who are you? What happened to me? My name is Artie. I had just arrived at the terminal to catch my flight to France when I saw you collapse here on the sidewalk and unconscious. I've called 911 and help should be here soon. I don't know what happened to you. I just found you here as I was hurrying into the terminal. The last thing I remember is a crowd of people hurrying past me. I got knocked down and must have hit my head. Oh, oh. I have got quite a bump back here. It was so kind of you to stop. Have you missed your flight? Yes, uh, I'm afraid I have, but don't worry. I've texted my friends and they will meet me at the airport in Paris. We will travel together to St. jean pied de port to begin the El Camino. I will pick up my bicycle there. is just arriving. The man is conscious now, but I think he may have a concussion. No problem. I'll remain here, and I'll be on my way as soon as the paramedics take over. Goodbye, sir. I hope everything will be well with you. Thanks again, and may God bless you on your journey. It is long past midnight when Artie arrives at last in Paris. He expected his friends to meet him at the gate, but they are nowhere to be seen. He gets a text on his phone. We had 
to rush to make our flight to Biarritz and could not wait for you. Your bicycle was on our flight to Paris and you can retrieve it at the luggage hold area. Sorry, see you in Biarritz. Oh, now what am I going to do? There are no more flights to Biarritz till tomorrow night. I'll have to rent a car with some of my money. But I cannot blame them for not waiting. I just don't know if my money is going to last. As Artie makes his way to the rental car office, he is approached by a mother with a small child. The child is skipping and singing softly. Prayer a shaka, prayer a shaka. Whoa, whoa, let go of me. What are you doing? Can you please help me and my child? We are homeless and have nowhere to go and nothing to eat. Please, everyone just pushes us aside. But this is France, and there are plenty of services here for the homeless. Let me find a gendarme for you. That won't do any good. We have already spoken with him, and he just sent us away. Please, can't you help us? Well, I know of a camp just outside the city where the homeless are welcome. Let me rent my car, and I will take you there on my way to meet my friends in Biarritz. Oh, and I need to fetch my bicycle. I'm going to need it for my pilgrimage. Thank you for wanting to help, monsieur, but I'm afraid that will work. We have already been there. In order to stay, you must have some form of shelter and your own food for two days. They will not allow you to sleep out in the open. You go on your way, we will keep trying. Artie begins to ponder. What should he do? If he gives the woman his tent and food, he will have no shelter for his own journey. But Artie is a person of faith, and he makes his decision. Here, take my tent. Here is some food and water as well. I think it is enough for both of you for two days. I will arrange the car, fetch my bicycle, and then drive you to the camp. But where will you sleep if you give us your tent? Do not worry. I have my bedroll and I have slept out in the open before. It is summer and the weather is fine. I will be fine too. My friends will share their food with me. Come now, you and your child. Let's be on our way. What are you doing here? You, woman, get out of here. I warned you before, you and your little brat. Maybe I should just take you both to jail. Oh, that won't be necessary, officer. Both of these ladies are with me, and they have done nothing wrong. Come now, let's be on our way. Artie rented a car and drove the woman and her child to the homeless camp. He helped them check in and set up the tent in the space they were assigned. 
and then drove the more than 800 kilometers to Biarritz. He drove without stopping, and it took more than eight hours. He has turned the car in at the Biarritz airport, where he, again he gets a message. His phone has long since run out of power, as his charger did not work in the rental car. So there was no way for his friends to communicate with him. They had left a message for him at the airport. Sorry, friend, can't wait any longer. I guess you're on your own for the El Camino. See you back in the States. Already exhausted, frustrated, and disappointed, sees the rabbi sitting at the cafe table. He approaches the rabbi. Excuse me, do you speak English? Yes. Do you mind if I join you? I'm very tired and could really use a cup of coffee. And some conversation, if you wouldn't mind that too. Oh, this, this is great. I can, I can charge my phone while we talk. <laughs> please, please sit down. I'm glad for the company. So where, tell me where you're headed on this uh, beautiful morning. Well, Merci. I am on a personal journey of faith, mm. which has led me to the Camino de Santiago. Mm. I was supposed to travel with three friends, but unforeseen circumstances got in the way of the journey. Mm. Now, they have gone on without me, and I'm afraid I will have to travel alone. Mm. I don't know if I can go on. I have no tent. Most of my, f my food and money are all gone. Mm. Perhaps I should just give up and go home. <laughs> Perhaps. But think about why you began this journey in the first place. Has that changed? I mean, were you not expecting some hardships along the way on this thing? You know, I think some of the most transformative pieces of our lives come through patient and triumphant suffering. And remember, those who seek the divine, obviously, you know, they're supposed to look among the poor and the lowly, the sorrowful, the oppressed, those whom society has rejected. Perhaps that's your journey of faith. So you must stay on the path. Have you heard of the poet Mark Nepo? Excuse me, Mark Nepo. He says, uh, I think it goes, to, change, to journey without being changed is to be a nomad. To change without journeying is to be a chameleon. But to journey and to be transformed by the journey is to be a pilgrim. Well, thank you, teacher. Thank you for sharing your table as well as your wisdom. I will now be on my way. Mm -hmm. Peace be with you. And with you, my friend. So Artie continues his journey. He has ridden the 55 kilometers on his bicycle to saint jean pied de port and begins his trip on the El Camino de Santiago. At last, his pilgrimage begins, he is thinking, not yet understanding that his pilgrimage began a long time ago when God called him to be a person who acts out his faith. As he travels the El Camino, he has many opportunities to share his food, 
to use his first aid kit to patch up injuries for other travelers, and to experience the glory of the heavens as he sleeps in the open. But on this day, the sky is dark with a threatening storm. So Artie seeks shelter in a church in Punta La Riena. He sees a woman hiding in the shadows. She grabs at his sleeve. Oh, please can you help us? We have come from Algeria to escape persecution in our homeland. We have no documents and police are looking for us. My children went to go find food, but they have not returned. I know nothing about the immigration laws in this country, but I have a friend, a lawyer, who works at an office in my home, church, in Lansdowne, Pennsylvania. His name is Malik, and he is an immigration lawyer and knows a lot about these kinds of things. I can call him on my phone. Hello, yes? Yes. Oh, all right, yes. Police, police, they're coming! Oh. Oh. Two children just ran in here yelling for their mother. They're all breaking the law, and I need to take them in. Where are they? Are they hiding behind that door that you're blocking? There is no one here, and I am not breaking any laws, so look elsewhere. Do you need to see my papers? They're not here. Let's check another church. Oh, come out now. Come out. The police are gone. My friend Malik suggested that I take you to a place that helps refugees. He has given me the address and he will call them to let them know that we are coming. I, I have a little money left and to get you some food. Come now, we must hurry. As Artie leaves the refugee center, the storm breaks, tired and discouraged, his money gone, his shelter gone, no food, no medical supplies. All he has left is his bicycle and his return ticket. He realizes he has no choice but to bicycle to the airport and go home. Oh, God, but, but I have failed. I so wanted to show my faith in you, my faith in your son, Jesus, by completing this pilgrimage. I just don't have the strength, nowhere to turn. I'm so sorry. As Artie is praying, he begins to remember the scripture his pastor urged him to keep in mind on his journey. Matthew 25, verses 25 through 35 through 40. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? When was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? When was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you. And the king then will answer, 
Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. Artie suddenly realizes that he finally understands what people in his church have been talking about when they say we are becoming a Matthew 25 church. That being a Christian is more than attending church every Sunday and more than participating in all of the church committees and programs. That it means taking our faith out into the world and make, making a difference in the lives of the poor, the oppressed, the marginalized, and the neglected. That his pilgrimage was not a failure, even though he never made it to El Camino de Santiago. That in fact, he is not on a pilgrimage to an ending place, but rather a lifelong journey as a disciple of Christ. Thank you, Lord, for setting me on this path, for teaching me what my real pilgrimage is. Amen. Now I must hurry home to share what I've learned with my church in Lansdowne and help us all step out in faith on our Matthew 25 journey. I invite you to join us now to stand and to uh, join in our next hymn, number 407, Win a Poor One.
Please be seated. Boo, I'm here in the middle. In case you didn't see me, I'm out here. So you may or may not know, uh, the first Sunday of October of every year is uh, not just communion here at the church, it is also World Communion Sunday, um, where we celebrate the sacrament of communion with churches from all over the world. Um, so we will do that this morning, um, here from within the midst of the community. Friends, this is the table to which Jesus invites us. So let us partake joyfully. God planted seeds now germinating into a tree of life, an orchard bearing fruit. Such is nature, abundant life budding. And Jesus sets the table and invites us to dine. Water into wine, land where bread is born, and a people on the path of perfect communion. Friends, this table does not belong to the church, to any one of us. It belongs solely to Christ, and it is Christ who offers this invitation. So all of you are welcome here at the feast at this table. As a reminder, we're going to pre pretend that this is our center aisle, so you can come through the narthex or this little tiny aisle uh, on the sides before, um, before uh, receiving the elements. Friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right. Holy Triune God, we give you thanks for all that you have provided for us as we gather this morning to share in this meal of thanks and remembrance. We join with Christians from around the world to give praise to your name. We thank you for your abundance to all peoples around the world, knowing that you are a God of abundance. And we join with you in making sure that the whole world has enough. In your abundance, you set your only son to be with us, to show us the imperative to feed those who are hungry, clothe those who are naked, to quench the thirst of those who are thirsty, to visit those who are sick or in prison. May we see the face of our Savior in every person that we meet on our screens and those who we may never meet, but are equally blessed in your eyes. And as we do this, may we constantly be in prayer, especially as we pray the prayer that our Savior Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. O oh God, we give you thanks that on the night of his arrest, when our Lord Jesus was at table with his disciples, that he took the bread, that he blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you and for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you eat it, do this in remembrance of me. And so, breaking the bread, we give thanks for this bread, for the fruit of the earth, and the hard work and the gift of the grace of God. We break it and share it, remembering the words and actions, the gestures and the glances, the silences and the self-offered life of the teacher of Nazareth. We give you thanks for the fruit of the vine, with the joy of communion, for alliances that endure, in the search for justice and wholeness. We take the cup knowing that we are a part of a community of people, renewing its covenant with new life. Will our servers please come forward, or to the center.
All is prepared, folks. Come taste and see that the Lord is good. As God has so abundantly given to us, let us give back to God as we receive the offering.
Let us pray together our prayer of dedication. Holy God, as we remember your work on this earth, we give thanks for the example you set before us. May we offer to you now be used for your kingdom and multiplied in your glory. Amen. Our closing hymn is on the insert in your bulletin with the instructions for how we'll sing it uh, for everyone born.
Friends, thank you for going on this different journey with us this morning. Um, can we please give another round of applause to all the Presby players for the work that they put in? There were several weeks of Saturday morning rehearsals to make this possible, so um, Sorry, I had to let my Adam's apple get back down in my throat. Um, <laughs> that hymn gets me every time. We learned a new hymn. <laughs> um, it was a good day. Um, so, as you go out now into the world, have courage. Hold on to what is good. Render unto no one evil for evil. Y'all should know this by this point. <laughs> Strengthen the weak. Support, Support the faint hearted. Rejoicing always in the power of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love both today and forevermore. And let us say together, Amen. Amen. That was so good. Oh, do you know what? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That was so good.